Hope everyone's doing well today. So a few, again, more housekeeping items. Please have your microphone muted when necessary to make sure there's no background noise. Um, then we can unmute them when you go into your small groups because we do want there to be some interaction. Uh, please listen deeply so you can really understand what others are saying. Please embrace this time where you kind of say, yes, and in other words, yes, I have Parkinson's or I'm a care partner, someone with Parkinson's and I'm so many other things like someone who likes to bake and someone who enjoys hearing about other folks and loves football. So many other things like a group leader. Um, be willing to agree, but also go that one step further. Um, move with intention. When you hear good ideas, run with them. I don't know how many times people will say, I'm going to bring this back to my support group. This was so great. And this is, you know, why we're here. And of course, be patient with technology, because while it's wonderful when it works, it doesn't always work. Why are you not working? Speaking of things not working. Is this slide, oh, okay, there it goes. There it goes. Okay, wait. Okay, so today's chat storm is about March Madness because March Madness is upon us. So to be funny, I kind of thought, what frustrates you or makes you mad? What are you sort of like, I could do without, I would rather do without. So for example, for me, I would say, <laughs> so Kelly had a windstorm issue and uh, was kind of like, that was not fun. <laughs> disorganized people. I agree with that. It's actually one of my biggest pet peeves is I think do your job. You know, like when someone is just not doing what they're supposed to be doing, that really upsets me. Chris says Parkinson's that makes you frustrated or mad. <gasps> uh oh, Roger says a broken rib. And that concerns me because then I'm thinking Roger was dancing up a storm and broke a rib because in my mind, that's what happened. Not that he fell or something. So I hope you're okay, Roger. Karen's a little sick of rain, even in even sleet. Oh, insomnia. That is a hard one. Oh, people. Sleep deprivation is a form of torture. That's a tough one. Green pollen. I too am very sick of green pollen. Non-genuine people. I do hate fake people. I agree with you there, Perry. <laughs> Tying my shoes. Spam phone calls. They drive me crazy. Especially because now it used to be I was one of the few people who work from home and now I think a lot of people work from home. So I feel like when you're calling somebody at home, there's a good chance you're calling them at work and that just makes me annoying, annoyed. Oh, Judy says arthritis keeping me from walking because Judy's got places to go. Um, Chris did say, although I've met many amazing people due to my Parkinson's disease, but it's okay to say sometimes it gets frustrating. Uh, Bernard says, disrespect of my time demands. Yes, when people are just sort of thinking you're just sitting there waiting for them, and that would be really difficult. Corey says, trouble with my furnace. Oh, and there were squirrels in the attic. That's not good. And critters, that's not good. Larry says, persons who frequently interrupt others when in conversation. BJ says, not finding my link to sign on to Zoom on time. These are some great ones. Thanks for sharing your March Madness with us. Mine might be technology in a moment, but hopefully I'll, I'll get this to go. We will see if I can move my... Come on. There we go. So our roundtable for today this can be difficult, is keeping everyone happy when you have various uh, varying dates of diagnosis in the group. So you have your newly diagnosed, you have your intermediate, and you have your advanced. So how do you keep your groups balanced? Because most of you don't just probably do caring and sharing. You have speakers. So what are you doing 
to make sure that everybody feels welcome and that they get something out of your group. So let's start. The general support group. Most of support groups are general group meetings, um, meaning that they're for PWPs and care partners. But the thing is, is that even when a group is specific, like care partners specifically, or women with PD or young onset, it's usually not disease state specific. And part of the issue is, for example, if you only had a newly diagnosed group, that group is going to grow and over time it's going to become cohesive and bonded, but then they're also not newly diagnosed anymore. And it would be really kind of heartless to kick someone out of your group. So that's why most of us don't really tend to do something specific like that, like a newly diagnosed group, or the same if you have that intermediate group, because eventually they're going to become advanced. So how do you balance that to make sure everyone is inclusive and they're getting something out of your group? So just for um, simplicity's sake, I'm, I am using generalities. Um, usually when I say newly diagnosed, I mean zero to five years, intermediate five to 10 years and advanced 10 plus years. But of course these are generalities because as I wrote, you know, we all know somebody who is not doing so great after three years and you'd almost think they were intermediate or advanced. And then you have some people that are just kicking butt even after 12 years. So yes, in theory, they're advanced, but they're not really showing those symptoms. So how are you keeping your group balanced? One thing you can do is have a topic sent out beforehand so people can decide if they want to attend or not. So I had a situation several years back with my Spring Hill group. Um, the leader invited a funeral director to the group. And the thing was, is that her information actually was really great. I see some cringes though. <laughs> so some of you are kind of feeling like, oh, that's, that's a little crazy. But one thing she said is she's like, you can talk to me now or your kids can talk to me later, but someone is going to talk to me at some point. So wouldn't you maybe rather put some things in order? Because also, you know, one thing she pointed out is you don't want your kids making decisions, for example, out of guilt, that it's like, well, there have to be a million flowers or else mom won't think she's loved. And she's just like, and yet you're sitting there and thinking, don't you spend a million dollars on flowers? That's silly. Um, I think that there were some in the group who weren't sure that they loved the, the topic, but they, they acknowledged that they got some good information, but others were clearly uncomfortable um, and upset. So I think that having a heads up on that would have gone a long way since people would have either said, huh, not what I was expecting, but I'm, I'm still going to go. I'm a little curious as to what she has to say. And others were like, no, hard no. I don't want to hear this. This is not for me. And I think honestly, having that beforehand would have gone a long way. Um, but also you can continue to have a social beforehand. So people can still participate in the group, but then they can also leave if they don't want to hear that topic and they don't want to be rude though. Ah. No, I'm going the wrong way now. Okay, hold on one second. I'm going to stop my sharing for a second. Kelly, this is where I really need you <laughs> because you're so much better at this than I am. It should, looks I good. I know you. you're. I should have you know. sent this to you. <laughs> this is what I get. <laughs> it looked good from this side of things, but I know the control seems to be having issues. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share my screen again, but I'm not going to. Um, I don't think I'm going to do it as. Um, uh, I'm going to leave it the way it is so I can control it better. And I'm going to ask that also that you keep the topics fairly general. Um, but then I'm also going to caution you. It's kind of hard to keep the topics general because if you have someone talking about cognition, for example, that can be a little bit more intermediate and advanced. Um, same with safety in the home. But if you keep everything focused on introductory or elementary topics, you kind of risk alienating the folks who have been around the block, so to speak. 
And so I know that sounds great, Eden. You just told me to keep it general and also said you can't really keep it general. So I appreciate the great advice. And that's what I'm here for. Um, what do I want you to do? I want you to, when I say to keep it general, focus on the shared purpose, namely living with the Parkinson's, living well with Parkinson's disease, because that is ultimately what you're trying to do, but also encouraging that sense of belonging in the group. I don't know why my dog is going crazy right now, but apparently she too was frustrated that I gave advice and then uh, took it back. So she, she, she hears your frustration. <laughs> um, I do talk about balance though. If you have a speaker on a more extreme end, for example, if you would have a hospice worker to discuss end of life issues, make sure you also have another speaker, a different mom, to deal with more newly diagnosed issues, such as talking to loved ones and progression of symptoms. But I also want you to talk about the shared topics. Like for example, how do you manage stress? Everybody wants to talk about that. That is something that's always going to be universal. I don't think anybody could say, I don't have stress, I don't deal with stress. And again, it might not be all related to Parkinson's. It could just be, you have a windstorm coming, you know? what do you do? Um, frustration driving, if you have anxiety and suddenly the, the something like driving becomes too much, how do you get around? Uh, you can talk about challenges you've encountered and how you handled them. People like to hear a success story that it's like, so this happened to me and I tried this and it worked or something like that. It makes people very happy. You could talk about adaptations you've made to make life easier, um, dealing with grief and or loneliness. That's something even in the beginning stage or the end stage you deal with, because the thing is, is that Parkinson's is about a lot of loss, um, giving things up sometimes, having to adjust how you do things, not being as fast as you were, um, things like that. There's a lot that you're giving up with. Um, relationships with adult children and other relatives. Does your daughter-in-law drive you nuts? People want to hear that stuff. People like to hear stories. Um, and again, that's something that can be kind of a universal topic. New research. Everybody always wants to hear about what's new, what's working, what, what's going on, you know, and side effects from medications. People, is anybody else on this? Because I was on this and I found this. People want to know, um, you know, what is working and things like that. And so basically what I want to talk about is what are you doing to keep your meetings balanced within the Parkinson's disease state, the disease state. And if you have speakers, are you asking them to keep it general? So I'm going to put these questions in the chat. I don't need you to um, do anything. Kelly is going to put you in groups. Um, and we're going to talk about this for about 45 minutes or so. So come back about 103 and share what we're doing. Let me stop my sharing and put this the questions in the chat, but I just basically want to know what are you doing to make sure everybody feels welcome, whether they are newly diagnosed, you know, and they just want new information. If they're intermediate and they're like, I've heard this a hundred times, I don't need to show up. You know, how are you keeping things balanced so that everybody feels welcome and included in your group? All right, I've got the breakout rooms ready, so I will send you all into those and we'll see you in a little bit. Love to hear. Welcome back, everyone. We'd love to hear what you discuss. So I'm going to start with room one. That's Bernard, Bill Brawley, Bradford, Carol Helming, Lauren, Sarah, and Tim. If you guys elected a spokesperson or if you want to come off mute and tell us, okay, Bill's waving his hand. Come off mute, Bill. What were you guys discussing about how to keep things fair and balanced? Um. 
you see, we discussed, um, it didn't seem like many of us were dealing with this problem particularly, mm -hmm. but uh, so, um, let's see. Um, Bernard has a has a, formed a group. Um, he has new people in a group together, and um, and he has experienced people in a group together, and um, there's significant diversity of experience through the groups. Um, And then we we really went sort of off off topic okay. at that point. Um, what did you talk about then? Because I'd like to hear that too. We discussed everything from the willingness of people to drive to a meeting. You know what what amount of time they're willing to commit to doing that. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, the unusual intimacy with people um, in a group. Mm -hmm. Um, and how rapidly one one's conversation can turn to topics like constipation. Um, how to tolerate, um, how to deal with people that have speech difficulties um, is kind of a tough one. Um, you want you want people to have enough time to express themselves, um, but sometimes other people aren't so tolerant. So how do you balance that out? Um, sometimes spouses can be enlisted to help translate for the person. Um, there was a question about whether we pay speakers or not. And uh, the sense was no, but offering a gas card can be nice if they're coming a long distance, just to acknowledge their, uh, their, their service. Um, what's the best average group size? Um, I get, and to allow for comfortable discussions, um, depending on the topic, you know, whether, what kind of topic you're doing, is it education or, or not? Um, it seemed like most of the groups range from 10 to 30 in the room that we were in. And then it got then it went on from there. So I think that's a pretty good summation. Hey, but see, I love that because we start with a topic, and maybe some people will be like, "I really want to discuss this," and others will be like, "You know, it wasn't really an issue. Can we talk about something else?" And everyone is like, "Yeah," because I'm I'm with you. I'm not having that issue. But here's what we're dealing with, and I love that. Because ultimately, again, this is your group. So I want you guys to talk about what you want to talk about. So thank you, Bill. I appreciate that. Sure. Now we're going to talk to room two. We have BJ. We have Dave Orlovsky. We have Kai. We have Karen. We have Michelle Lane. And we have Naomi. Do we have a speaker? Hi, Eden. I'll yep. uh, talk for our group. We had a really good group and a good discussion. As usual, we completely meandered off topic. But um, a couple of the good things that we talked about was if you can, uh, and you have a large enough group is to really try and split up the group, because that gives each group, you know, the way of connecting with others with a similar situation. So we've got a couple of people in our groups who have, you know, the, the new newbies meet together, the young, the caretakers, everybody meets in a separate area. And, you know, it's not feasible for everybody. I don't have a large group, but as soon, it, what, I, what it gave me a good idea is maybe we could have our regular group. And then this, even if it's just a couple of people who are in each category, they can mm -hmm. do something as kind of a sidebar or meet outside the meeting. And, and but again, just trying to connect people with like-like, uh, even if they're all mm -hmm. in one meeting could be very helpful. Um, and another good suggestion was keep the meetings informational, kind of to your point, you were talking about keeping it general. So in his case, he keeps the meeting informational, so it's less kind of personal. And um, 
Another good suggestion was they have one meeting that has a speaker and then one meeting that's just talking about their themselves. And then people can choose. They know that the speaker is going to be more informational, less personal. And if they're just comfortable with doing that, they can join that meeting and then perhaps skip the next meeting if the other one is too kind of personal or emotional for them. So just giving people options and what kind of meetings you have, alternating is a good idea. And then we kind of meandered and talked about other things. Dave had a great suggestion. They have, instead of a one leader, they actually have a committee of people who oversee it and they rotate. So the leaders will rotate, they get together and they actually debrief after the support group meeting to say, how, hey, how did that go? Is there things we can improve next month to make it better? Um, so I thought that was a fantastic idea is to, to have that. Somebody else talked about um, sometimes in the meetings, they can have panel, so it's just everybody getting together and talk. But you have a panel of kind of the, the theme is living with Parkinson. You have someone in different stages, a newbie, somebody more advanced, and they can be more of a panel and then you give them a topic. And then they can each talk about their PD from their experience. And that seems to be really successful. And um, I thought that's a great idea because a lot of times having an icebreaker is hard. So if you know there's a panel and the focus is going to be more for them, the other people kind of open up more and are willing to ask questions and then start sharing about themselves. So that was a good, good idea. And um, of course, BJ has a lot of great social activities in their groups, which is really great. You know, um, walk groups, meeting at community centers, having uh, faith-based meetings, potlucks, barbecues. But what that does, aside from everybody having fun, it helps everybody build a relationship. And I think if you help them build a relationship, then they're more respectful of each other. So even if you are in a meeting and somebody, you know, we're talking about kind of bridging the gap, you'll be more respectful because you already have a relationship with that person. So uh, you'll have more patience and you'll be more willing to listen to maybe other people's situation. Um, another topic was having a theme of arts and entertainment, which is great. I'd never heard of this. They want to do a meeting where they have a comedian and music and art and all sorts of stuff. And again, leading you know to, to social and kind of breaking the ice, which I thought was terrific. And um, and then we talked about benefits of having a website. And um, so there are a couple of people who do have a website, and it seems to be a beneficial way to kind of drive people who are thinking about it, or even telling potential speakers, "Hey, go look at our website, and we'll give you some more information about our group." Of course, posting informational things like when the next meeting is and what the topics are, but just kind of having a center, um, which I thought was a great idea. I don't have a website for ours, but now I think I'm going to put just a simple one together because it is good to have a little landing place on online for that. And I think that's what it. Did I miss anything, group? It was a good meeting. We enjoyed it. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. I appreciate all this information. Can I put in a quick plug in real fast? Carl Please. Rob had to leave, but tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Uh, at parkinsonsocialnetwork.org, he's going to be uh, interviewing Larry Gifford, and uh, Larry is a big advocate in the PD community, so if you want to sign up and see that interview, uh, go to parkinsonsocialnetwork.org, and I'll be in the chat. Thank you. Okay, you got it in the chat because I was going to put it in the chat. You got it, Guy? You're going to put it in the chat? Yep, I'll do it. Perfect. And then from room three, we have Sydney Donahue. We have, and I apologize, I don't know if it's Helena or Helena, so I don't mean to mispronounce your name. We have Ken, we have Lorenzo, we have Perry Heilman, and we have Roger. Who's going to come off mute? Oh, come on, group three, don't make me pick someone. Yeah. 
I was trying, okay. to, I was trying to find the mute button, but I think <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to pick you anyway, Perry. <laughs> I think I have Parkinson's, yeah, couldn't find it. Um, we, had, we had an interesting discussion. Uh, uh, a lot of it was, was uh, uh, or some of it anyway, was on numbers. Um, now that we're, uh, uh, um, we used to have, most of us used to have many, many people show up for the meetings and, and with the advent of Zoom and, and all this COVID stuff, um, numbers went way down and uh, groups were small enough to where you could kind of leave it open. And uh, uh, the group decided uh, what they wanted to talk about and uh, you'd go from there. And uh, I, I, um, uh, uh, that, that was something that, that uh, uh, Ken had been talked a little bit, and and uh, uh, I know there was some uh, there was some good points of view there. Uh, um, Helena had some good points, and and uh, uh, as well as uh, 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 Lorenzo, Roger a little bit more quiet because he's uh, kind of hurting this morning. So we understood mm -hmm. that. So, uh, mm -hmm. but but. Uh, um, just, just a lot about um, um, just a lot of general stuff. Getting to know each other uh, was what I love to talk about. Um, and a little time before the meeting, a little time after the meeting, where people can just mingle and then uh, have time during the meetings. Uh, maybe uh, someone can stand up or or have everyone stand up with just a little uh, something about themselves that maybe someone else doesn't know about just to get to get to kind of know each other and and and, and that you're not defined by your parkinson's there's a person behind all that and, and and to me that's what's important you're so right because you do you have so much more in common than just your parkinson's yep uh, and and the, the fact that that everyone's there in the first place at this meeting means they're a fighter. So there's something in their background that 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 made them that way, and and I those are the stories I love to to hear about because uh, they're bringing traits uh, uh, to help them through this that that uh, that got them through the rest of their life. And uh, um, you find who your friends are in this community real quick because everyone's genuine, and that's what I like. Best people. Yeah. Thank you, group. Thank you, group three. Now, it looked like group four was asking uh, who should be their speaker. I saw it in the chat. And so I'm going to say that's going to be Ann Miner, Barb Smith, Corey, Judy Reynolds, Jay Euchre, Lori DePorter, and Susan Scarlett. Who's going to be the spokesperson? I see Ann Miner talking, but she's on mute. She's saying, not me. It's always, it's always Judy. Judy does a great job. Come on, Judy. You want to do it, Judy? No, nope, <laughs> she's saying you, Lori. Okay. Well, we went Everybody a bit. else took a step back and you're stuck at the front saying, oh, I guess I'll do it. That's all right. I'll talk. Um, First of all, we had a new person join us. Where'd she go? Barb Smith. She does not have Parkinson's, but she has essential tremor. Did I get that right, Barb? And we introduced her on it's you know, basically it's the same format, same, same, same thing, just a different, just a different animal, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. Um so we welcomed her and we kind of talked about how to get people, how to the ways and the avenues to get our name, get get our group out there and to get people. Um because not not everybody had the the issue with like different different levels or whatever, but that was one of the main things that we talked about is how to like go to the libraries and um, just just different ways like get try to get a rate public radio spot, have somebody announce it on the radio and um, that kind of thing, like all the different avenues to get our to getting our getting our names out there. That was probably what we talked about the most, right? Shake your head, group. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that, that was, that was, that was mostly what we talked about. And, you know, just, just welcoming each other to, cause not, and not everybody knew each other. Okay. Um, we talked about palliative care versus hospice care and that kind of thing too, as well. 
and the hospice is not just for end of life. It's, you can, it's for other things too, but it's a different, if it's a different element when you have it in your home versus if you're in a, if you're in assisted living. Yes. But also I do think that I'm glad you guys had that conversation because I, I'd love for it to become normalized that this isn't something scary, that it isn't like, oh, you're hospice because you have two weeks left to live. Like that's not what hospice is. That's not, and like you said, palliative care is not necessarily hospice. And sometimes palliative care is just making decisions. And it's not necessarily that you're at death's door. It's just sort of like, I'd like to have my affairs in order because right now while I'm of my sound mind and I'm not making decisions in a panic or a rush, I can think these things through. Right. It also can provide a lot of supplies like that you don't, that you didn't, you normally don't, that you normally would have to buy. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's some great resources you can get that way. And again, you're also working potentially with a social worker who does this all the time. So if you're like, oh, I actually need this. They're like, okay. And within five minutes they can get it done. Cause that's what they do on a regular basis. Yeah. So awesome. That sounds anything? like you- I think we got it. Is that everything? I think that's what I would get most of what we did. And yeah, you're not on mute. So if I missed anything, you can chime out. But awesome. And now group five, we have David Cox, we have Debbie, we have Don Benedict, we have John, and we have Nasreen. Who's going to be the speaker? Well, I guess John wanted me to speak, but I again <laughs> asked if Dave or John wanted to also help. You know, I was in a room with folks <laughs> they had quite a lot of experience with groups. Some of them uh, were belong or were the leaders of groups, up to 150 people participant. They had both the Zoom and in person, and they had social hours, and one of the groups that Phil who had to leave, but he had a pledge, a short pledge that they, they start their meeting with it that seems to break the ice and bring people together. So it was quite interesting to me. And then we have also John here who doesn't have Parkinson, but his wife is, he's a caregiver. So he facilitates groups and actually they have a caregiver group that is separate from people with Parkinson's disease. So we talked about many things, but I have to say that these people are have all very different groups, but all of them very, very successful groups. And it didn't seem that any of the group had any specific problem with anything. Debbie brought something up about how to break a bad news to people in a group when they meet again for the first time. And we talked about it, but also she had a reference to one of the UCSF um, support groups that I assume is uh, on Zoom that actually help people to learn the the vocabulary, how to bring a, a, a bad news to people who used to see each other in a group and maybe now one member is missing. So we talked about all of it, but it seems like, as I said, all groups start with things general and some groups have a lot of cohesiveness of friendship among each other. They're, they're, I did not feel any sense of difficulty or lack of subject for any group or even problem with attracting people, actually the opposite. They had to have different type of groups in order to keep it in control because there was a very, very good attendance in all of their groups. If there is anything else for those of you who were with me in the group wanted to add something, please go ahead and do so. Oh, is everyone going to be shy? Well, I appreciate all this input because this is what we love. And like I said, we've talked about, I like it when you guys go off topic because I do want to know what's important to your group. And so, you know, based on like some of the things I'm, I'm hearing, I thought, oh, I, I wonder if we could get somebody who knows how to do a website. 
because if that's something that's helpful, maybe you guys would like some information on that. And that's, this is how often, how we also shape our meetings is when you guys talk about something and it's like, oh, I guess this is a topic we should maybe talk more in depth about next time because a few groups kind of touched on it. So clearly it's something that people are talking about. And again, this is kind of like your support groups. You, you might have something in mind, but then your members start talking and it's everyone's group. It's not just my group. And I want to hear what people have to say and what's on their minds. And, you know, what do you want to hear basically talked about at, at our meetings? Does anybody have any final thoughts or anything before you want to come off mute and share something that maybe didn't get shared or? Well, I'll tell I you something. Oh, oh go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, go ahead. you're more important. Go ahead. No, no, I'm not. Uh, just one quick question. Have, have other people seen this ultrasound? Uh, it just came out the other day on the internet. Uh, using ultrasound that the tremors go away completely. It, it's a, it okay. seems like a scam to me. I don't know. I have a hard time believing it. Has anybody else ever seen this? It's yes. called focused focused ultrasound. And right. it is it is not reversible, whereas DBS is if it, you need it to be. Um, it's essentially a very concentrated uh it, it sort of, they work really hard to hit the right target, but it, it burns it or cauterizes it or, you know, shuts it off somehow. So it's meant to shut off all the things that are troubling us. Um, but because it's not reversible, it's a little scary <laughs> to think about. It, it just seemed to me, I, I'm familiar with it from other uh, things I've learned but I've never seen a video that was that dramatic. Uh, and it made me wonder if it was for real or not. <laughs> it was extreme tremors to no tremors whatsoever. Um, so it just made me wonder. I, um, comment, just a quick comment. Um, they can only do one side, apparently. They can't do both sides of the brain. And also, I know one person who had it done and she hasn't had very good success and it cost her quite a bit because okay. she had to go out. She had to go out of state to get it done. So that that's my only um, input on it. And, and I agree, it's not reversible. I would feel, yeah, once, once they zap whatever they zap, it's gone. So I don't wow. think I would, I don't think I would do it, but. Good, thank you. And what were you gonna say? Oh, it has. I'm gonna. I'm gonna pass for now. It had nothing to do with that. Well, no, I'll tell you. I just wanted to say something fun. I bought a package of about 24 kazoo's, and everybody's supposed to bring their kazoo to the meeting. And we we kazoo. You are my sunshine to our speakers at the end of the meeting. <laughs> and it's, it seems like the speakers kind of get a kick out of that, and they do too. It's just something fun to do. You know, something like, anyway, this off subject, so. No, I love <laughs> that. Really cheap, really cheap. You know, I should, I, I hear, wait. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta say, we need a demonstration. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> we, we use kazoos as well to, to strengthen hey. some of the uh, vocal cords. Oh. Uh, it, it's actually an exercise. I did not know that. Oh, yeah. Definitely. So you works. just hum into hum into it, and that helps with the vocal cords. We we do an awful lot of that over at uh, our gym with Rock City Boxing, but then also uh, strengthening the vocal cords and the muscles around the the vocal cords. And a kazoo works wonders. It's amazing. So just with the humming, does that? Yes. I did and, not know. And the blowing out of the air. Yes. Okay. Excellent. I'm glad I brought it up. And for a I belong to a treble clefs choir. That is actually one of our exercises. You are my sunshine, and we do it through a kazoo. Yep. Oh, my yeah. goodness. I'm trying to get people to come and sing, but I haven't gotten that far yet. <laughs> well, I do remember. I, I see Michelle's hand, but I do remember one of my professors once said that it's 
basically impossible to sing You Are My Sunshine without smiling. And she was like, just you start to sing it and your mouth just opens up and you can't help but smile. So what were you going to say, Michelle, and then Roger, and then we're going to wrap up. I just wanted to add that on the focus ultrasound, from what I've been told by the physicians, that um, once you have that, you can, you're not eligible for DBS surgery or have a cold. <clears throat> but I just wanted to add that it was either or, and you couldn't have both. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's better. It has an MRI machine. And Roger, what do you want to say? Do you remember the... There mm. was cognitive benefits to using yes. your mind and your mouth and your thoughts simultaneously. Anything that requires multitasking is beneficial. Thank you. And I hope you're feeling better, Roger, because shingles and broken ribs are not fun. I might say, I use my aware and care. I keep my med list in my planner. And there was one single medicine that got red flagged. Do not use it over extended time. It could cause problems and don't drive so. A plug for aware and care. Everyone should have one and fill it out and keep your med list current. Exactly. Well, thanks everyone for joining. Um, if you would like to save your chat, if you click on the buttons at the bottom of your chat where it says more, you can save your chat. And I appreciate everybody coming today and I'll see you all next month. Have a wonderful month. Enjoy March. Bye.